first episode of Hyper Heroes Live. Oh, yeah. It's an it's enthralling. Hello, hi. Hi guys. Hi. Hey, we have an audience. Hi guys on the hi, couch. Audience. Hello. Two hi. ladies on the couch. Welcome. Um, uh, yeah. So you guys want to talk about Thor first, or do you guys yeah, want to talk yeah. about other stuff first? Because we didn't get to talk about uh, Josh Sweden was in the theater with us. Oh, oh, we, oh been they've, been oh, they've been talking about it. They've been, it? yeah. How cool! <laughs> Sorry, I saw it's him pretty rad. and my eyes bugged out of my head. It's just you I, know what it reminded me of. Oh, he did you hear him? But when the trailers right before the movie started, no. the the yeah. theater just went dark. Uh -huh. The theater went dark, uh -huh. and he goes. Justice League. And <laughs> you know I why, swear though, right? to God, you and I thought that was hilarious. You know why, right? No, because the guys next to me kept, they realized that he was sitting there and they uh -huh. keep going, Justice League, Justice League, Justice League, Justice League. Oh, is that why? So finally when the movie started, he was like, Justice League. That oh, nice. gotcha. So, That's good. I mean, yeah. Creeper, yeah. I looked over at him during the movie, during mm -hmm. the Blow first like five minutes of the movie. Oh, yeah. And he knew all the words of the movie already. No he way. Was, he was talking along with the Are movie. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, so he must have written or he must have read the script. He, he must have he known the script. Have He's probably wow. seen it a few times. Collaborated. He must have no. seen it a few times. Why was he there at that screening if he'd seen it he a had, few times? He had probably sure, seen he, the rough cuts. Yeah. Either that or I, I'm I sure imagine. he wants to, he wants to he wants see it with the audience. Exactly. Yeah. He wants to see audience reaction. Sure. Because, I mean, we've seen, Kev, we've seen Kevin Feige in movies. Sit, yeah. sit in front of that. We've, know, seen, right? we've seen Kevin Feige <laughs> in, in, in movie screenings uh -huh. and stuff. Uh -huh. and, they, uh -huh. and, that's, and that's part of it. But yeah. it's like, why? Yeah. I mean, I guess, why would you want to see it with, in front of an audience? Just to see what the audience reacts to. Exactly. Just to see if there's any fi exactly. finishing touches you could put on Justice League before it comes out. I don't know. I don't, I don't think this has anything to do with Justice League. Hang on. We can't. Hang on. We can't hear Augie's. My mic's Okay. Okay. I don't think this has anything to do Shut with Justice League. It's him. Like he was he's a big part of the Marvel universe as well. Still you know? though? Like, I felt I thought it was like Dunzo. I thought I he did, he did Age of Ultron I, I and he's like, say, I'm out. I would say I wouldn't say uh I don't want to say he's completely done. I think for now doing Justice League and, and I wonder when Batgirl. What else yeah. is he on working on Marvel? I, I don't think he has to work on anything. Working, but I think he was like, "Hey guys, if you need help, I'm right here." Yeah, you know, sure. like I've done these things. Okay. so there you go. Plus, I'm sure he's friends with Taika Waititi. He's I'm friends sure with all the writers. I'm sure, they're all friends. Exactly. I was, they I, all know each other. I was thinking the whole time. I was like, "How bizarre must it be to be him, yeah. sitting and yeah. watching this movie that's essentially a sequel." To multiple movies he's worked on. It's yeah. a sequel to yeah. Avengers: Age of Ultron. Yeah. It's a sequel yeah. to the first Avengers. It's, yep. you know, it, I mean, every movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is technically a sequel from the last one right. and the last one and the last one. Right. But like, I mean, this, but, one's, right. this one's primarily a sequel to Age of Ultron and The, the Dark World. Yeah. And it's yeah. a film that didn't, that he didn't have anything to do with writing or directing. And right. here's these right. characters and mm -hmm. actors that he worked on, that he wrote, that he directed. He knows mm -hmm. these actors. Mm -hmm. So he's sitting down and he's like supporting them. Right. But this is, a th it's like, it's like seeing, you know. Your kid graduate or do something. Oh, you know exactly, I mean? like, exactly. Especially because he was so responsible for bringing the Hulk back in such a big bad way. Exactly. He was the first director to work with Mark Ruffalo Hulk. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we get to this, and Mark Ruffalo These Hulk is baby big time These in this are movie. His babies. It, it's also probably like some like seeing somebody else date your ex. Because sure. it's like you know what I mean in like a public sure. setting. No, 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 it's no. Like, I don't think it's like dating your ex. I, don't I, don't I think it's, it's like because Taika yeah, Waititi's dating Thor now. I think you know it's mean? like watching your kids get married off. Yeah, yeah. that's what it's like because. Really it's, interesting. It's it's like they're changing and evolving in in ways that they have to. You Arsenal know? You have Roy to let them 2K go. says he still produces Agents of Shield. True. Well, his yeah, brother his does. Brother too. His brother's yeah. like the yeah. showrunner mm -hmm. uh with his I think wife and producing Kent partner. Kent Rowan. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean I, I, I mean he probably but like jo like JJ Abrams was a producer on Lost until the last episode. He didn't have anything yeah. to do with the show yeah. Lost sure. after the yeah. pilot. Sure. So it's like Okay, sure. They're his Consultation babies. Is so very okay, much a thing. so yeah. let let me start off with an overview of what I thought of this movie. Go. I no think, spoilers. No I spoilers. think this was the Guardians two movie that I was looking for. Like this. This this movie fit right, right in. You were kind of like. Mm, on Guardians 2 Guardians right? was so, so. This is right in the middle. I love. This Guardians is great. Too. This is bad. It's like kind of here. Okay. It's like for 60 40 for you. Okay. 60 40. I I I liked it, but I didn't love it. I think this movie was the style of movie that I was looking for in Guardians 2 because yeah. the humor on this, it's it's very New Zealand, very Taika Waititi, God, very, so very um, in some places didn't fit so well. Sure. In other places fit beautifully. Yeah. Totally. It was it was jarring in some places, but other places it was just it was spot on. Mm -hmm. um, there was some things that they did with it that that I didn't expect. It's just it, it's sort of like I don't know how to describe it. You have to watch Taika Waititi's movies to kind Absolutely. of understand. Yeah. I really hope that after the, after the, next weekend when people go see Thor Ragnarok and if people really enjoy it, 
I want to tell him, go see what we do in the shadows. Yeah. Go see Hunt for the Wilderness. Yeah. Go see Boy. Yeah. Go see Eagle versus Shark. I can't wait like, to get in the spoiler review. Like, I know. Go, I know. Go see know. those <laughs> movies because if if you like Thor Ragnarok, there's so much of Taika of him slipping yeah. his little Taika isms in there that I'm like, God, you, 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 you'll, <laughs> you'll, dig, you'll dig these other independent movies He's that you that his white titties maybe, all over that it. maybe you missed on. You know. So yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what else? What else did I enjoy? Uh, there were some characters that I think they could have cut. Uh, other characters that I wish they would have expanded on. Mm -hmm. uh, when when it was coming down to the end of the third act, I was like, "Wait, I still want to spend more time in this world. Sure. Like, I don't want this movie to be over yet. I think there's still so much stuff that you could do with this. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing because yeah. the 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 end of like a music show or a rock show or something, you all want always want to leave the audience wanting more. To go off of that, when I saw Thor: The Dark World. I wasn't like, dude, Alan Taylor needs to come back and yeah, do exactly, Thor 3. Right? Exactly, exactly. Even after the first Thor, yeah. I wasn't like, Kenneth Branagh needs to do all the Thors. Right, after no. After the ending of this movie, I was like, bro, if y'all wanted to do a Thor 4 with I'd Taika, be oh, I'd yeah. be down. Like, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's that... It's that fun. And yeah, I'm like, I want to see this combination again. Yes. In a way. I, and, and I... The, 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 so the 80s music themes, I felt like that was a little extra, mm -hmm. but... Like the extra the way that kids use it in a bad way? No, no, no. Well, I mean, it was maybe like a, okay. hint, like a hint of that. Okay. Because I understand why they put it in the movie in certain parts, but they didn't need to like make the theme, like the main mm -hmm. logo of the movie 80s like that, even though Which I Which it kind of really wasn't when we get to the movie. Right, exactly. It really wasn't. So I think that might have been mainly for more promotional things, sure. which makes sense, I guess. But, but if you're coming in expecting like an 80s right. movie like that, it's it's definitely not I that. got I got an 80s vibe with um, – like, do you do you all remember when they tried to do the fantasy comedy? Uh, uh, what was it, Your Highness? With, yeah, um, yeah, with mm -hmm. Natalie Portman, yeah, James Franco, James Franco and, yeah, yeah. and then yes. uh, 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 Danny, Danny McBride, McBride yep. was the lead of it, mm -hmm. where they were trying to harken back to an era. It was really during the 80s when yeah. they made these kinds of fantasy films and yeah. they were like always had like special effects with varying degrees of success, like yeah, pretty right. shitty green screen and rotoscoping yeah. and like those old kind of movies like right, right. like uh, like Willow. Like bad right. practical like, effects. Yeah, like, that kind of thing. Yeah, like, yeah. I got some of that vibe throughout Thor Ragnarok. So I feel yeah. like so so I feel like in terms of 80s movie, it's not like Stranger Things 80s movie. Right, right, but right. But they're trying to get capture this vibe of like a fun like the cheesy, charming cheesiness of yes. an 80s movie. Yes, yes. which which <clears throat> Thor the Dark World was trying to do serious Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. to huh, varying so degrees hard. of success. They were trying <laughs> too hard. And 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 I think that this movie knew not to try that. So they're yeah. like, let's try the fun, cheesy like yeah. Conan the Barbarian style. I would say that the Thor movies have the most Differing tones between in the movies, all three movies. Big you have like time. a yeah. Shakespearean. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. And then you have uh, like mm -hmm. a what, what did like you say? A Lord of like the Lord of the Rings. Style. Yeah. Like big yeah. Yeah. And then this is very much just like an action comedy. It's mm -hmm. very, <laughs> and I love that they did. I love the fact that Marvel took a risk on Taika Waititi because they did some things in this movie yeah. that I was. They were straight out of left field, and mm. even though like. It's very, very comic booky, and in any other movie, it would not have worked. Mm -hmm. Things in this movie worked well, so I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna put this movie in better than Guardians two, definitely. Okay, uh, not as good as Guardians one, but like reaching up to that point. It's mm -hmm. like a, a little brother of Guardians one, Phelan, but in a, in a, in a great. It's like the little brother that you love. You're like, oh, this kid's gonna be something one. Yeah. Long asks more differing than the Guardians of the Galaxy flicks. I think what Adam's saying is between the own the, its own movies in yeah, a franchise. Yeah, between the yeah, franchise. Yeah. Between not, just the three not, movies, not between the, all the cinematic yeah, yeah. Mar Marvel cinematic between universe Thor, franchise. Thor: The Dark right. World, and Thor: Ragnarok. You watch those three movies, yeah. you're like. These yeah. they're really they're like different. three different. Yeah. These are but three like, players. Yeah. Captain different America swings. one, two, and three kind of close. Like one is off, sure, but like they're right, right. pretty right. close. One with, like, is like the most and... like fantastical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then two and three are more similar in tone, obviously. And I think it's also because the Rousseau brothers are the sort yes. of thing that yeah. keep it going. Yeah. Phalanx says, "Ooh, I gotcha." <laughs> Adam, <laughs> gotcha, what are your gotcha. sort of overall uh, non spoiler thoughts? I was really, really hyped for this movie. Yeah, super yeah. excited for this movie. The trailer, I love. The trailer so much. Mm -hmm, Hector mm -hmm. and I had a blast doing a trailer actually for that Comic Con trailer mm -hmm, when mm -hmm, Surter mm -hmm, shows up. Mm -hmm. um, I I'm kind of with you on this. Like I really love the movie, but to me, some of the comedy felt a little like too much. I would have I would have preferred to spend a little less time having jokes and spend more time with characters like Hella or Valkyrie mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. 
maybe developing certain relationships that I don't necessarily want to spoil in this review, mm -hmm. but certain relationships that you, you kind of want to see more of. Right, right. Um, I wanted to be a little bit more invested in them, and I mm -hmm. wanted to feel a little more emotional about them. Mm -hmm. And I think other the other problem, too, is Thor is one of those characters. Like, the last movie we got was in 2013. Right, yeah. It's been four years, mm -hmm. and we've had so many other Marvel movies and come two, out. And since mm -hmm. Avengers Age of Ultron, which was like, again, this is also like a direct sequel of, exactly. like, last time we saw Hulk mm -hmm. and Thor two years exactly, ago. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I think for me, I, to be sucked back into this world, I needed to spend a little bit more time understanding where the relationships ended and what kind of where they're picking up. I can see that. And I, I think, can see that. I think that's the big thing for me, is like, there are certain key moments in this movie that I really wanted to feel the emotion right right and right. i didn't feel it as much as i wanted to it kind yeah, of pays off here. later on in the movie mm -hmm. but i really Ooh. would have liked for it to hit it harder in the beginning yeah i cannot um, wait to do the spoiler review keep going I know, yeah, yeah i know but overall i think like tonally i think this is what marvel needed to do with thor i think they needed to do something different Ab something fresh agree. Agree. Freaking they would have agree. tried to do something that's too much in line with thor one or thor mm -hmm. two i don't think mm -hmm. it would have worked and real quick real quick tori She's saying, I'm trying so hard not to get too hype, but I really like Kate Blanchett. For Kate, stay that hype. Yeah. Kate Blanchett in this film. She's good. Mwah. She is pizza perfect. chef. It's perfect. Kate Blanchett. Yeah. Mwah. So yeah. stay hyped for Kate. You yeah. hear that but, deliciousness but, but and listen, Hector's kisses? But, but that's listen, how good it is. You hear the deliciousness of that smack? Yeah, that smack. But listen to us about like the rest of the film. But Kate... Yeah. Not yeah. a... Yeah. 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 Bien. Bien. yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and I think those are, those are kind of the things that I wish that we would have spent more time with is some of these characters to really feel the emotion and it has yeah. really nothing so much to do with the actors as much as it has to do with the writing kind of expanding it out a little bit letting it breathe a little bit i mm -hmm. feel like sometimes we were going back and forth between things maybe a little too much a little too fast uh, and i think overall sort tried. of the concept of what ragnarok is lucas what's a ragnarok it's a Ragnarok. Anyway, um, <laughs> but I think for me to really feel sort of the emotion of what ragnarok is conceptually the end right, of all things right. I wanted to feel it a lot more. I wanted to feel like the stakes were even higher. Mm -hmm. And there is payoff to it. I Maybe it's just sort of an emotional state that I was in watching the movie. I wanted to feel it even more. Right. Holy a shit, bit, a, a Red bit Ranger bit showed up. Hey, Whoa. Who is this guy? Wait, What's are up, you guys dude? What? It's the yeah. Red yeah, Hell Force Ranger. Whoa. Come on in, come on in. We're talking no spoilers on Ragnarok. Give us like a quick little okay. non-spoiler non Ragnarok review. It is a superhero improv show. Ooh, yes. good way. Oh, to it. fuck yeah. yeah! Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it feels oh, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautifully said. Yeah, yeah. that works. Anyways, that uh, works. I'm gonna get going. <laughs> Thank you for having me, guys. <laughs> Later, buddy. See you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, Peter Damn, also, I love yeah. Red Hat Force Ranger. And I love improv. Maybe that's why I like that movie <laughs> so that's much. That's why you really liked it. Yeah. yeah. Just, to, yeah. just to go off what Adam's saying, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Mm -hmm. And here's what's going to be interesting. In the same way that, like, we've talked so much about Netflix shows watching one episode per day versus binging. Yeah. And how they're different experiences. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys, it, you, I saw Thor: The Dark World literally last night. Did you uh -huh. watch both or just Thor: The Dark Just Thor: The Dark World. The Dark World. But okay. but but I can but because of that and being refreshed in that way, uh -huh. I can imagine seeing Thor: Thor: The Dark World and then Thor: Ragnarok. I can imagine seeing Thor: Ragnarok right after seeing some other Marvel Cinematic mm -hmm, Universe mm -hmm, movies. Mm -hmm. You guys are not wrong, but here's the thing: what you're saying is so difficult to do, and I feel like they tried yeah, it yeah. in Thor: The Dark World and failed. Mm -hmm. Now you can point to well, Hector, that had a bad script, that had bad 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 bad, but that movie still attempts to do more of the overly dramatic yes. moments and yes. less on the comedy. They really try to it, hit on Thor and Loki's uh, brothership, and, brotherness. And it brotherhood. Did, brotherhood. And, it, and you can watch, you can look at that and you can go, if this thing doesn't work, this movie doesn't work. Yeah. Mm, and yeah. because it didn't quite work and it takes itself so seriously, it's like, it's like cheesy and in a bad way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You guys are not wrong, but this is going to be a different viewing experience if you watch it Thor 1, 2, 3. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be different. Because might, without getting into spoilers, a thing that happens towards the beginning of the film that really references Thor The Dark World, I was like, this is amazing, and they are absolutely nailing why Thor The Dark World didn't work. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're saying to this movie, we're not going to try that. Right. We're going to have a good time. So yep. you're not wrong that there could have been more this, more that, more emotion, yeah. but I feel like they erred on the side of let's... I guess play it let's, safe and yeah. let's let's sure. get Taika let's turn and, it. and for sure you know nail it with comedy yeah, and then yeah, yeah. maybe kind of try with the dramatics and if right, we don't right. quite do it it's going to be a fun movie and it's right. going to be and sure. I still think that some of the dramatic stuff did work I would have liked more of a moment in the beginning but right. 
I, th- I know a lot of people are saying the Ragnarok stuff doesn't work because there's so many jokes. I disagree. And this is another movie like most Marvel movies. They're going to benefit from repeat viewings. And mm-hmm. I think if you mm-hmm. see it the second time, it'll yeah. be easier to look back and go, all right, structurally, I see yeah. what they're doing here. I like this. I don't like that. Yes. But but I'm glad that this is here versus why they, like it'll be yeah. it'll be different. So yeah, there's a yeah, lot, you're, there's, you're right. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the movie that I think works and it works really well, particularly partic- like there are specific relationships that I think re- work really. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, I think, I think uh, Thor yes. and Hulk are a great pair. I think these two guys. I think pretty much honestly, these action figures. Everybody here works. But that's great. Fresh, but I think I think that's the thing though. I think they work really well independently. I think Hulk and Thor work really well together. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, Hella works Thor well. Thor and Loki right. work really well together. Yep. Valkyrie and Thor work really well together. Yes. Yeah. Thor and and Hela work really well together. Valkyrie, and but I Hulk. feel like we didn't get enough mm-hmm. sort of of them being together. Right. Where I could I be like, it, right. oh, I get collectively, this all works really, really well. I, I agree. I agree. And it's with also that. the circumstance yeah. of the movie because the movie is doing multiple things because there's a lot of stuff happening. Right. Right. I loved getting to see more of Heimdall. That was yes. freaking rad. Yes. I love Idris Elba's character. And even with all that we got, I'm still like, I want more Heimdall. Of course. Like, and that's Always not necessarily Heimdall. a bad yes. thing. So, no, no, But no, it's no, no, no. It's very interesting to look at it's this a film. Balance. To, at the balance. To look at it and go, how did they balance it this way? Why did they balance exactly. it this way? Right. Who's not in the film? Who exactly. is in the film? Why are we spending time? With, like That's very interesting to look at it because after seeing the movie once and I want to watch it again, that's a conversation I want to have. I want to be like, well, let's talk about why did they make those decisions? Because yeah, right. I think it's really interesting. And some of it, it they were right and some of it, they were mm-hmm. probably mm-hmm. wrong. On, but that's I, you know. You know what? I wouldn't say they did any character wrong. No, I honestly wouldn't say they they did. Right. They they no. made any character Correct. flaws Correct. with this movie. Correct. The, the Goldblum thing, was great. Somebody Gold, asked about Goldblum. So Goldblum, yeah, Goldblum. Flag ass. Perfect role for Jeff Goldblum. Goldblum, Goldblum. Goldblum was Jeff it's Goldblum. Goldblum. Yeah. Like, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff, just hang out on the set. Just be you, baby. Be did you, you guys? In, did you guys makeup? hear that he was almost going to be the senator in Captain America: The First Avenger, oh, the one who was like. I think you just changed the war, and then ask Steve Rogers to like be part of the USO show. I did. Oh, that, really? That, that yeah. minor role in Captain America: The First yeah. Avenger. I'm sure he would have done fine. Oh my God! I'm so glad that did not happen. Yeah. <laughs> because the Grandmaster is so perfect for Goldblum yes, to yes. do Goldblum. Well, and plus he, and I, it's, think, I think it's, it's amazing. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the way they they set up the world of Sakar. <laughs> yes. He very much is the perfect fit for that because yes. I think if they try to get somebody who's too dramatic, too stoic. It would have brought down sort of what that scenario was supposed to be. Well, it, you have the other characters kind of handling that, and then he's just being this big sort of they're, grand they're also, figure. They're also playing with the World War of Hulk and the Planet Hulk story, yeah, a little in bit. which mm-hmm. the the main bad guy who who is is Jeff Goldblum's character is not a funny guy. Is sure. not he's this, You're talking about the Red King. Yes, yeah. he is this mega maniacal, <laughs> overbearing warlord, serious ass character that mm-hmm. doesn't mess around. Yeah, and so I think that's a way to kind of like service. They did a lot with this movie. They serviced I sort know, of man. my need for uh, a Planet, Planet Hulk, Hulk story, yeah. World yeah. War Hulk storyline, and they kind of interwove it pretty good. I mean, I yeah. if I'm not gonna see a Planet Hulk movie. This, this is this is a pretty good this is not a movie. terrible consolation prize. No, it's yeah. it's not a terrible consolation yeah, prize. Absolutely. One thing that that I do want to say about this movie and that happened with the Thor franchise is this injected the Thor franchise with heart. This movie yeah. was one hundred percent heart. I agree because Taika Waititi was quoted in saying that look, we don't have real jobs. We show up to set and we pretend stuff all day. Like. He wanted to have fun with this movie, and that came across 100%. And you're talking about heart. I've never rooted for the character of Thor right. more in totally. a movie. Exactly. I, like, yeah. I, at the end of this, I was rooting for him, and I'm like, right. I rooted for him more in this than in the Avengers film yeah, or absolutely. any of his solo 100%. movies. So 100%. in that regard, success. Yeah. But you guys 100%. are not wrong with some of the balances of co- yeah, comedy we'll, versus... We'll get into that in the spoiler review. We will get... I, I want to talk about but it. But there are, there are moments where, like, when there is comedy, it is gold. Oh, yeah, absolutely. God. Particularly absolutely. with... Joss Whedon was cracking up, man. Yeah, yeah. And he's laughing. either seen the script or like I don't know. <laughs> seen but it a bunch of times. He was yeah. cracking up. Um, really, really it's no much. secret that that. Well, I won't name names, but there obviously is one character who kind of shows up at a certain point. And there's some great cameos. Yeah, yeah, some great cameos. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the score is great. And you guys are suckers if you do not see this in 3D. I had a great time with the 3D. I hated the 3D. Oh, no, <laughs> no joke. No way. Ah, I'm there with you, brother. I you hated the nuts. 3D. There was so much there positive parallax, it hurt the, to look at it sometimes. There was some shots no, that I, I dug could it. not look at because yeah. the 3D was... The very opening shot of Thor, his chin is out of place. Come on. All these bri- Oh really? Everybody's hair was falling Oh, the back. hair was fucking there was terrible. So, oh my god. Yeah. It was... It, sorry, t- y'all. T- it was bad. did it. 
Two yeah. companies, two yeah, really was, good companies. Yeah. So I have to, I have to either blame that on time or budget. I, I don't know. know. Um, Quality really. There dipped. and there, like some of the 3D, I think was great. Overall, I did not like it. I no, I, I couldn't. Like I it. can't. I, and I I I'm look, not disappointed I in that because I love 3D. So we've or worked. We, we all do. We've worked yeah. on 3D stuff. Yeah. Some of the stuff that I saw on screen, there was no way in hell I could ever get past anybody. Yeah. There's a shot of Thor. Where he's Which talking one? to somebody and it's a close up of his face. His hair is like coming out. And oh, like yeah. A huge cra- there was, like, no, what? there was a lot of that. What? There was, there was also so a shot stuff. of the cosmos that just went flat. Yeah. Yes. And I went, guys. Like when they were flying through guys, the galaxy. Guys, what are you doing? It but, just then, went flat. but then there were other shots where they are going through the Bifrost and or whatever. I'm like, this is 3D. That as was fuck. I think, that was and I, and, I, and I don't know 100%. I think maybe they did it because they were afraid that it was going to overwhelm the audience Possibly. by like so much. But then we had Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange did some really kooky. Crazy really shit great in 3D. stuff with 3D. Yeah. So, really great I don't know. Stuff. Yeah, I was not. Yeah. I was not impressed by the 3D. It's Man, probably like one of my least such a favorite 3D movies. You guys are bumming me out from the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> That is universe. such a bummer. I'll give you some of that edging stuff. I noticed some of the edging stuff. The it type of things. Of the type of stuff. things that again. Regular people will never notice. I don't know, man. I don't know. Nerdy Black had just asked the question, what about for us normies? I don't know. I think if... Reg- again, there's- have you guys ever heard yeah. a regular person <laughs> on the internet? No joke. A regular person say, oh, I the edging guess. in the hair of a three... Well, because no, I don't never. think they know how to articulate it. They don't I know, think they don't know they, what that means. I think they literally don't see it. I remember so I many edging issues. Right. I remember so many right. just you're to just to right. just to be on the other side for a second because I get it. You guys are totally valid, but y'all are out here. You have this responsibility to try to convince people three D is cool, and you guys are doing stuff. I don't have a responsibility to convince people three D is cool. I, I'm not paid no by Stereo somebody Dino just said in the chat room, no R- "LOL, RIP three D," and it's like that bums me out. But all right, fine. If you guys want to be a part of the problem, go ahead and do it. Hey man, but I got a three D TV and I buy three D Blu rays. I'm not part of the problem. And they'll stop making it. They will stop making. They're gonna stop. You it. buy 3D Blu-rays doesn't mean the studios are going to make them for you. No, but <laughs> 3D is enjoyable when it it's is. attached to good movies but it's and the people when that it's go good. see it. Yeah, yeah but would people listen? People loved the 3D in Jurassic World. Hector, you didn't even pay for the movie. Stop it. <laughs> I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to buy the 3D Blu-ray, and I'm telling people oh, to gonna, pay for it. Look, I'll buy in the movie Ragnarok, in 3D. When the, when, when the opening scene, which I don't want to tell you what it is, when there's a camera perspective that is like, let's be, stay on Mjolnir for a second, yeah. I was like, yeah. this is a fucking brilliant use of 3D, yeah. and that hasn't Absolutely. happened in any Thor film. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like I said, there's You're moments right, where it's great, right. but overall... It was I just I can't get on board because I know the quality of these studios. I know what they that can do. That bums me out. Yeah, me too. I know what they can do, That's and they I dropped left. the ball. We worked for on both of them. That's why yeah. we We've all done some yeah. dope ass three D movies. Yeah. And so it's again, the ball. it's like that have like, flaws. Yep. Well, that's yep. the thing is yep. like I, I don't want to say they dropped the ball because I don't know how much time Marvel gave them. Sure. True. True. You know that, what I mean? So it's like it's it's true tough, that. and it's like we don't know how many other movies and they're how working much, on. How much of the film they were reshooting and doing shots and doing da 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 and how much of it studios to stay competitive will send to uh, India right. and those true, are true. fantastically talented artists but they're yes. always like just get it done time yeah. that stuff in there just time crunch thing whatever they get back and it's that's a bummer what they put in the movie. Yeah. It's so, a bummer. so that's the hard thing is like I can't I can't put blame on the studio because I don't know the circumstances right we if don't. we if we, we know don't. that like well they sure. gave us 5 months and we waited mm-hmm. last minute to do it then blah, 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 then sure yeah. but if it's like yeah. well oh. we had all these other things we're doing but even then that's not an excuse you're a professional movie company and you should budget your time better yeah Boom. It's true. And and it's and it's uh, it sucks, man. They've yeah. made documentaries about this because it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I want you to budget your time better. I want you to pay your Absolutely. artists because they're Absolutely. there. They're working OT. You know they're working OT. Yeah. Yeah. I want to congratulate all of the stereo supervisors, friends that we've known yeah, and are we still friends with and people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whatever little number of names got in the credits, I want to be like, great job, man. Yeah. They're totally. Marvel, if you could put more names in the credits, that'd be great because there are fucking hundreds yeah. of people there who work on the 3D conversion. They're sacrificing their movies. lives for these movies. Uh, we know. We lost a lot of sleep working on these guys. Didn't have a good time with the 3D experience. The things ruined it for them i'm saying they're not wrong those flaws are in there but i'm also saying you normies ain't ever gonna notice that shit <laughs> for real for real and i generally speaking had a great time with the 3d that i was like Aww. spaceships mjolnir surter hulk i had a great time but you know obviously do whatever you want to do and whatever the masses want that's what's gonna happen. how it's dare you really it's angry. gonna be it's sorry, gonna be Hector. you know i'll know 3d will die when Marvel puts out a, a movie in cinemas that is not 3D. Sure. And it's not like a one shot or something. Like yeah, the, when they're like, yeah. Spider Man Homecoming 2, it's just going to be flat. Just like yeah. Deadpool. I'll be like, oh, okay, yeah. we're done. We're, yeah. we're out of 3D. Yeah. They're like the last studio that is consistently. Sure. And we've got Graf Zeppelin saying, please die 3D. That's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> While we're at it, let's get rid of uh, computer generated let's, effects let's and get, color and sound. Well, Fuck there, all that there stuff. is let's, a. Talkies. There is a lawsuit going on with Marvel and uh, a certain company about the MOVA software. 
Oh saying yeah, I saw that, that the Mova people think that they own the think like that they own the, the rights like, to the software. Yeah, that or like using, to the characters. Yeah, they think they own the rights mm. to the characters that they've been using for the software. And mm. yeah. I don't think they're gonna win, but it might put a little hankering for a while yeah. on, on that nerd asks a legit question. Thought, thoughts on those forty theater experiences with the moving chairs? I think they're dumb. It's a gimmick. But I haven't done one yet. Yeah, but the last movie I saw in forty forty X whatever it's called was Inception. Mm. So not bad. I would have liked to have done Fast Five like that. Mm. I think they had it for one of the Fast and Furious oh, movies, I, and I'm yeah, like, that'd I, probably yeah, be yeah, fun. Sure but I don't know. Do. All right, let's wrap yeah. up this non-spoiler review. Non-spoiler review, my final thoughts. I, I thought it was fun. I think we pretty much hit everything. Yeah, I think we yeah. Did. You guys didn't like the 3D. <laughs> the music was rad. We yeah. liked a lot of the characters. We think yeah. that the movie is uneven in parts and could have used more stuff mm-hmm. with other mm-hmm. characters. Mm-hmm. But we'll get into all that shit in our spoiler review. Yeah, for sure. Are we recommending this film? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think, and I don't know if you guys agree, it is the best Thor film. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Hands yep. down, best yeah. film. It's Go have my, a good time. It's my favorite. It's for sure. Despite the things that I don't like about it or the, or the flaws that I have yeah. uh, with mm-hmm. the movie, I still think it's the best. People are movie. asking for comparisons for 2017. You didn't think, you thought it was better than Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Absolutely. 2. Absolutely. People are asking about how does it stack up to Spider Man Homecoming. I'm going to say this those three movies that came out this year for Marvel, I think are all solid movies and they do different things. Mm-hmm. For real. Mm-hmm. And I, sometimes I'll go back and forth and I'll be like, Guardians 2, man. Whoo, that emotionally. Oh, so I liked it more than Spider Man, but then other times I'm like Spider Man, dude, it uh, nailed it. Did that tone, that little kid tone, is so fun. Yeah. Michael Keaton killed it. And with this, I'm like, this was so enjoyable and so much fun. And some yeah. of that, uh, some of the, I fucking got Hulk versus Surtur. Like, yeah, it's so exactly. Rad. That was cool. It's so metal. There were some mo- uh, moments that were so metal. So generally speaking, great year for those three. I'm gonna say Spider Man, and then Thor, Thor and, then and then Guardians. I'm. You might be right. I might have to agree with you there. You yeah. might yeah. be right. It, don't ask me to stack it up against the other comic book movies. No, because, like no, some of them are yet. just like in a Wonder different level. It's too early. It's Logan, too early. they're different, man. Yeah. They do early. different Wonder shit. Wonder Woman and Logan are just like we've had some good else. movies this year, yeah. man. I, Not too look, many stinkers. I, I can't. I can't be upset. I can't be too upset about the comic book movies we've had this year. Twenty seventeen overall right. has been right. a really good year. We've got two. Well, we've got Thor Ragnarok. We've got Justice League coming in a couple mm-hmm. weeks. Mm-hmm. Star Wars isn't yeah, technically man. a comic book movie, but we're gonna watch the crap out of it. It's it's hopefully a good year for big franchises. I yeah, would say that the yeah. biggest dud is probably Transformers so far. Oh, uh, sure. Those are always duds, though. And you know what? I just remembered uh, War for the Planet of the Apes came out on Blu-ray like a it week did. ago, yeah. earlier this week. I gotta go pick that shit up that in movie's... 3D so Blu-ray. That... I'm getting it. That movie's great. It's gonna be dope. That movie's so great. So this, does this officially mean marathon time at your house? Yeah, man. We'll All do right. it. All right. Two of them, oh, yeah, three, one of them flat. Yeah, Somebody's Lego earlier in the too. chat when we we're talking about the humor of Thor Ragnarok. They're like, "Yeah, if you want serious superhero movies, go see DC movies." Remains to be seen. Justice League's coming out. In two yeah, weeks. I don't we have know. no idea. I don't what's know. Wonder Woman had some was great in a lot. It. Yeah, yes, he does. Actually, so, yeah, Wonder Woman made me. Wonder laugh Woman had a lot. some great zingers in there. Yeah. So, so that's, that's not nothing always, to do with being one or the other. No, it's not always not about how the movies are written. Not at all. If you if you just like how DC films are like balanced with that, because even Batman versus Superman has jokes, y'all. Don't pretend like it doesn't. Yeah. It's yeah. got jokes. <laughs> it's got but if jokes. you just prefer that, are balance, they funny? Great. That's that's debatable. But don't, but, don't, but don't say that like DC is like serious and Marvel's like a joke. Like I don't you can't do that. I don't understand why do people that. insist on watching joyless movies. Like <laughs> because people are heartless on the internet. Because I'm gonna tell you what. For the however many people. Because a lot of the times when you're young. You think that some when something is more serious or done in a more serious way, then it means that it is uh, like more highbrow and more more worthy of. Pr- Does that make sense? Like yeah. when you're when you're a kid and you see like a rated R movie for Therefore, the first time, it is worthy. look yeah. at how Christopher Nolan handled the the. I just watched a video on this the other day and I tweeted it yesterday. Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight comes out in 08, and that is yep. realism. That movie is trying to be mm-hmm. realism, and it's amazing. You know what else came out that year? Fucking Speed Racer in 2008. Right. And don't sleep on Speed Racer. That movie is not realism. It is surrealism. Mm-hmm. It is fantasy. It is escapism. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing. And it's so heartfelt. And it's real. And it's, you know, and people might be scoffing, but it's like, you haven't seen Speed Racer. Like, yeah. so they're just two different approaches. So right. it's not, and when you're young, I think well, the first time you, you kind of are getting into film, you'll see some of that and you go, well, this is, this is Oscar winning shit. Right. Yeah. Before, you, before you can, I don't know, get to a place where you're like, Finding Nemo fucking makes me cry, and that's beautiful. You know, yeah. even though it's yeah. about talking fish or right. Kung Fu Panda. Right, right. exactly. Like, oh, it's oh about Kung Fu Panda's it. great. Exactly. So I, yeah. I don't know. I'm not saying that's always the case, but I think that um, I think that people just tend to think that. Yeah, I think, yeah no, they really think, I think people falsely assume that, that comedy video, equals, yeah. equals not serious. Equals yeah. kid stuff. Yeah, and comedy like there's a lot of stuff. R-rated movies that are comedies that are that are like Beverly Hills Cop is yes. an R-rated comedy action movie. Mm-hmm. It's got great humor from Eddie Murphy mm-hmm. and Judge Reinhold mm-hmm. and the supporting cast. 
but it also has some really dark shit in there. Like his best friend gets captain, he gets executed, capped in the head mm-hmm. in front of his apartment. Like he, mm-hmm. they're shooting people up. Mm-hmm. So it, it like, there's no one Coop of the Wilson. Kubo and the Two Strings is the best movie in the last five years. Yeah, Ooh. and that's Ooh. great. It's nice. a kid. It's Kubo's for really kids because it's animated, but yeah. it's it's not. There's yeah, more but stuff it has, on it. It's it has heart. Has a message. Movie. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, speaking All of right. Justice League, right. guys, let's, let's get into this. Did you guys uh, get a chance to listen to those Danny Elfman tracks? I did. I, I also did. did. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Really interesting. I want to listen to the whole score, but of course. yeah, we got to we got to see this in context. We got a little. We got a little sampling. It's interesting how the score changes from the very beginning, where it's really dark and ominous, towards the end, where it's really soft and yeah. Feel like there's a tone change mm-hmm. it's it we can speculate all we want on it but we're sure. not going to know what it's about until you know we watch this in context yeah, yeah, yeah i think it's very interesting how it is exactly how he described He's yeah, like, yeah i'm gonna take it and yeah. take a dark twist on that's literally what he did and then did his own thing on it yeah so. It's, it's. I mean, there's nothing else I can say on it because yeah. I, I need to see the. Well, I was, I was, I was hypothesizing with over here when Cameron was here, and I was mm-hmm. telling him, it's an interesting track because it's called Friends and F- Friends and Foes, mm-hmm. and it has a little bit of that Superman sort of John mm-hmm. Williams mm-hmm. little homage Absolutely, to it. it does, there's yeah. a little. There's like little tiny bits and pieces that sound like they're Batman Forever. I don't or Batman Returns. I don't know if it necessarily is. It just has mm-hmm. like similar sounds to it. But I was, I was sort of like speculating that well. And I have nothing to base this on other than my imagination. But I was kind of listening to the soundtrack and I'm going, this kind of feels like a sequence where Batman, when they're in the big battle in Chernobyl, I think it's Chernobyl, mm-hmm. uh, and they're they're basically going on a mission to try to save Superman. Mm-hmm. And Batman mm-hmm. is the one going in to try to save him. Because from a lot of the action sequences that we've seen, we don't see too much of Batman. We mostly right. see the other characters. Right. Um, but I... I was just speculating that maybe Batman is going in to save Superman. Mm-hmm. He comes across him. We hear that little homage to Superman, to the original Superman theme. Not Jeffrey. Uh, and then uh, he finds out that maybe Superman isn't necessarily a good guy. He's kind of weird. He's weird. Mm-hmm. He's maybe under mm-hmm. the influence of a, of Dark mm-hmm. Side or Steppenwolf, okay. whoever it is. Maybe there's some sort of a. I don't want to say a battle necessarily like a battle to the death but maybe there's some sort of tension between mm-hmm. batman and superman mm-hmm. maybe some old <laughs> old uh, oppressed memories that he has maybe, um and maybe, maybe they have to find a way to snap him out of it yeah but it's, that's it's very possible and i was just going that was basically my take just based sort of on how the song sort of unravels itself yeah because yeah, it yeah. kind of gets heroic two and a half yeah. minutes in and the, i'm like okay okay what could be happening it has this? an arc so it's yeah. like mysterious it's like ominous then heroic and then very soft at the end yeah i just hope that isn't the own like in that time slot i hope that's mm. not the arc we get superman superman's change if he does come right. in weird you sure know? Yeah. like he's like oh i'm angry and i'm you know brainwashed and then two minutes later he's doing heroic shit and then he's like Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I was brainwashed. Right, right. Like, hey. Yeah. You know, Lois is in the film, and I would love that moment that happened in Batman Hush where Superman is mind controlled by Poison Ivy, and they're in Gotham City, or they might be in Metropolis. They're in Metropolis, Mm. and Batman has Catwoman on his side, and he tells Catwoman, go get Lois. Go throw her from the Daily Planet building. That's the only right. thing that's going to snap. The key. It's going to snap Clark out of it. Interesting. I would love a moment. I mean, Amy I, Adams is I in the thought film. About Wouldn't that the be same amazing thing, if that yeah. happened? And like, if 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 Henry Cavill is like taken over somehow, Dark right. Side, Steppenwolf, and I then know that's exactly what, what you're doing too. When Dude, he goes, bam! <laughs> like that would be <laughs> yeah. so. Sick. There's That'd just something about that Posey hits that's yeah. so awesome. Yeah. And he and he catches her yeah. and he's like, "I've got you," and she's like. <sighs> I knew it. Who's got you? I don't I know. Can't, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no. no. Can't, too, it wouldn't too work. Homage-y, too it wouldn't homage-y. work. It wouldn't work. Yeah, no. Let's lean in. Fuck it. <laughs> Fucking CG Christopher, Christopher Reeves face on it. No, I'm kidding. That's yeah. too much. That's too uh, much. Did you guys see the new posters? They're I did. Dope. I saw a bunch they're of them. Dope. Yeah, man. Yeah. There's a lot. This movie has a lot of fucking yeah, posters. Yeah. They're comic booky. They're colorful. I like them. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I like the comic book he approaches more than like some of the photoshopped ones. My favorite one so far has been the solo Batman where it's mostly his cape and he's got that red light on him and he looks this great combo of blue and red. Yes. Because I'm like the blue Mm. makes me think of Superman. It makes me think like that Superman still has a presence and the other character posters don't quite nail it for me but that Batman one is so, it just pops so much that uh, the only thing that breaks my heart, and it will always break my heart, is my, I want my Justice League to have Martian Manhunter. I want my right, Justice yeah, League right. to have a Green Lantern. That's right. the only thing. I love Cyborg. I love the Flash. I love you know the rest of the lineup. I love that Aquaman's in it. That would be great. But it's like I want this thing to do so well that Warner Brothers is like, Joss, do you want to do another one? You got another one in you? <laughs> you got another Justice League too. We're bringing in John one? Jones. We're bringing in fucking and he's Green like, Arrow, Black I Canary, Black Man. There. That's what I'm saying. John Stewart, and Al I Jordan. Want, and I want my. Dun, 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 dun. 
Yeah. How would you feel? Gold, gold light. How would you uh, yeah, feel yeah, yeah. if we get the soundtrack in in, in a couple weeks? Yeah. And, and that's because there's a that track called dope. Justice League theme. That would be dope. That would be. That would be. That would be, oy, that would be awesome. Swing. 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 So like, yeah, Martian uh, Manhunter. Uh, Arsenal Roy says Martian Manhunter was great over on Supergirl this yeah. week. Yeah, because they got Carl Lumbly to do the. Hang on, have we have have has it has that episode aired? I don't know if that one's aired. I think it has. Yes, Carl Lumbly, who did the voice of John Jones in Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, oh, really played Martian Manhunter's father. Oh, that's Rin awesome. Jones, who's still alive on Mars. He's that's awesome. I think that episode. So, I think it I aired. Think it was Monday. It did air. Um, it, it aired on Monday. Ooh, Pew. I like that. Just, hey, you conf- be just confirm know, it. For dude, me. It's already been teased. You're like it's already a week been ahead of everybody. Just confirm it for me, guys, because I like I was watching and I was like, I didn't recognize that voice. I looked him up. I'm like, holy shit! It's Martian <laughs> Manhunter playing Martian Manhunter's death. Like, Man- Martian Man- 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 it was great, that's and I dope. and I love. Martian Manhunter and Supergirl, but it's still a thing of like yeah, I want him course. cinematically. Yeah. You want him get the big boy treatment. He, so he deserves the big boy. Those treatment. posters are rad, but it just makes me so excited for like I really, 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 really yeah, it aired this week. Thank yeah. you, Fleckery. I really want them to announce Justice League Two. You know, I yeah. want mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. give it to me 2019, 2020, whenever. 2020. 2021. 2020's good. 2020 is good. Wait seven years for Justice League Two, <laughs> but just like hi, I want one it. year for every member of the Justice. Yeah, League. man. <laughs> Um, no, I, thought, oh, I thought oh, the man. posters were good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's what I've been asking for for posters, comic book right. movie posters for forever. Comic book Give art. Give me a fucking comic book <laughs> artist yeah. making yeah. fucking comic book posters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is that so, something back up? Why, why have people not thought of this before? I don't, I don't know, understand. man. Yeah, I really I don't, don't understand. We've been saying this since the beginning. Alex Ross. Dude. Get Alex Ross. I mean, oh. I know that they did the The, the fact posters that Alex that Ross look, has not painted a poster for yeah. Justice League yeah. is like, why do It's criminal. It's criminal, dude. Yeah. Criminal, but at least at least they are taking his concepts and making posters out of. Agreed, them. agreed. At so least we're like, getting that, I which guess. is still cool. It, it, I yeah, guess. man. Maybe it, I'll, I'll. You know what? In my head, I'll just say, you know what? He just doesn't want to do them. They've approached right. him. He's just like, yeah, no. He's, he's like, like eh, it's not my like rate. Same thing with That's Drew Struzan. He's not doing any yeah. Star Wars posters, and yeah. I'm like, oh. I, like, wish was, I wish he was. Okay, I wish he was. I wish he was. But that's that's the answer in my head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys uh, excited about Deathstroke in his own movie? Joe Manganiello. Did they that? I'm happy for Joe Manganiello. Yeah, man. I'm happy for the actor. Sure. I uh, am. Am I ready to see the solo movie? Uh, not really. It's here's a. Here's I would be more excited about him thing. being in the Batman movie. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. Here's a tricky thing. Or to have a Deathstroke movie. I don't know because Death, Deathstroke has definitely had his own series for uh, for many yeah. many years. Yeah. yeah. A lot of comic book stories lines have been based around him i don't think there's any that come to the forefront that people are like that's an iconic dc comic storyline yeah. kind of the same for deadpool though if i'm being honest and deadpool got true, his own movie the true. problem here is that deadpool is like a parody of deathstroke sure that's how he started out deadpool is wade wilson wade wilson deathstroke is slade, slade wilson, wilson. <laughs> it's the issue of like how do you do a Daredevil movie after the Ninja Turtles parodies yeah. it kind of but it's more like how do you do a Star Trek after Galaxy Quest yeah, right. yeah. how do you do Deathstroke after Deadpool comes out and gives audiences that hyper violent rated R right. action fix that they want in a comic book movie that they didn't get up to that point Deadpool being the first rated R X-Men film right. yeah. But like, also not give them the jokes exactly. that Deadpool is able to look to the camera and be like we're yeah. having a good time right yeah what you know it, it, it doesn't it doesn't work. He, he might be a little by the numbers that's and that's so deathstroke to work needs batman i'm sorry there's no other way at this point because we're or, in a post deadpool world or the titans or the justice or, league yeah, or yes somebody somebody to work against because mm-hmm. deadpool works on his own because he's so self aware he's aware that he's a crazy character in a possibly right. a comic book world like he talks to the audience breaks the fourth wall and that's what's unique about deadpool when you hit a Deathstroke movie, just yeah. straight up, it's just another guy that has extremely right. good weapon skills and you know has Batman level and stuff. And a villain. Great comment from Redman Scott. Deathstroke is also at times much less sympathetic than Deadpool. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You're right. That's tough to you yeah. know. Did you guys yeah. see the raid? No, I haven't well, yet. No, I, haven't I know what yet. it is, but I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. yeah, I haven't had a chance to see it yet either. But I know from watching the trailers that the action sequences are in that are super, super dope. Mm-hmm. Right, and right. The director Gareth Evans is right now the one who's in talks to write and direct it. Mm-hmm. Um, so action could be sick. So Great. That, and so yeah, that's like currently that's the only thing I can base it off of right. is just what I've seen from the trailers. Right. Which I know a lot of people love Raid and Raid Two. Um, so. If those movies are great, I'm excited mm-hmm. for the director. Yeah. I just again, it's that that whole thing of like we're doing a lot of characters that are kind of 
Batman centric. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. And yeah. I get it that Batman is the most profitable character in the DC universe mm-hmm. right now right, in terms of right. his movies, his comic books, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, hell, DC stands for Detective Comics. Right. Yeah. Okay. We exactly. Get it. It's named after Batman's mm-hmm. first comic book run. But I would also like it if they were like, we're going to do Martian Manhunter or Plastic yeah. Man or Booster Gold and Blue Let's Beetle do Booster or Gold whatever. And Blue Beetle, dudes. Which I'm sure we'll get there. Right. Be kind of cool if we got are it. You, a are you earlier. sure? Are you sure we're going to get it? I don't know. Greg Berlanti, you making the Booster Gold movie or are you not? I don't know. Uh, Newfie curious. Pilgrim says, Newfie Pilgrim says, Venom, my favorite Marvel character, and Deathstroke is my favorite from DC. That's it's awesome. It's going to be a good year for you. Those Newfie? are rad characters. Yeah. And I feel like. Probably with Venom too, but we had this conversation about Gambit. Yeah, we love the character. We love the character interacting with other characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, same right, with Deathstroke. The characters but are dope. Now that the job is on them, basically to pitch us, like right, to, to, right, like here's right. why Gambit needs a movie. Here's why Venom movie's going to exactly. be right. Here's why exactly. Deathstroke. So yeah, we'll be there. We're going to check out that trailer whenever right. it comes out, sure. and we'll be like, then we'll judge. Okay, Deathstroke right. has your own movie. What's this? What's right. the deal? What 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 are they going to do? That. And why should this movie exist? Mm-hmm. Not just in the comic book universe, but also as a movie. Right. What is this adding to the conversation of superheroes and mm-hmm. superheroes and their place in cinema? You know, like, is it adding exactly. anything? Right. Are you making a throwaway movie that nobody's going to care about? And people say, this is why we don't put comic book movies in award ceremonies. Good night, Tori. Have a good night. Yeah, Enjoy Thor night. when you see it next week. Enjoy yeah. Kate Blanchett. Fay Long has a question. I knew nothing about Deadpool breaking the fourth wall, etc. When I first watched it, I loved it. Why wouldn't that work for Deathstroke? Totally different characters. They're not the Deathstroke same Deathstroke is not a comedic character. No. Deadpool was designed as a comedic parody of Deathstroke because right. Deathstroke represented that very grim and overly serious yeah. era of comics from the 80s where everything is, yeah. you know, I'm Deathstroke, the yeah. Terminator. Like that, I have lots the, of pockets. And over the years, he's been sort of smoothed out and made yeah. more serious and made more interesting. And, you know, um, so yeah, yeah so it, just, it you can't just map that on because right. comic fans would be like that's bullshit that's not who Deathstroke is and if you is. do it now it's just gonna be like wait is this guy ripping off Deadpool right right, right. so you can't yeah. do it you you literally cannot do it mm-hmm. otherwise your movie's most likely gonna fail yeah mm-hmm. exactly um I'm really excited about this next thing if it happens <laughs> X-23 oh man Oof. by that's, James Mangold and Craig that's Kyle that's interesting that's interesting uh, how do we feel about that? I see, I see, okay, so there's two sides of this coin. Sure. Mm-hmm. X23 by itself in in the incarnation of X23, not the Wolverine, because she is Wolverine now. Right. Correct. So there's a divergence in the X23 Wolverine storyline in which Laura Kinney lives on as X23, who's this super angry teenager who's trying to be Wolverine but can't be Wolverine, so ends up being like kind of this assassin and the version that i love now in which she embraces the wolverine name and is trying to be wolverine 2.0 yeah, which is like a yeah. better not i wouldn't say even better it's like what wolverine logan was trying to strive for yeah. like the things that logan wanted to be in his life but never could because he's such a tragic character mm. laura is working towards those goals which i really like because that's a that's some good character development x23 is is leaning more towards just like an angry teenager vibe of, right. of X-23. That being said, I, I'd i want to see a trailer. Like, I want to see what they could do. Like, if they could show me something really cool with this mm-hmm. character. Mm-hmm. But, I mean... La- I think I'm it. with Landstander. Uh, they said, I'm not surprised this is coming. She was so loved in Logan. Totally. Absolutely. She as a, killed it. As a spinoff of and Logan. She's Mexican. As a spinoff. She speaks Spanish, man. Yeah. I would love to see that actress come back. I would right. love to see James Mangold. Do- and is he the one that's in talks to, to yeah, do the film? Yeah, well, so right, now, so right now it's James Mangold and Craig Kyle who are writing it. They're writing a treatment. Whether, whether it gets past the treatment phase, we don't know. But I think the exciting thing is, is that because of how successful Logan was and because mm-hmm. how much people loved X-23 and James Mangold himself said he's like and also because of what Patty Jenkins did with Wonder Woman yeah. this is a perfect yeah. opportunity to Thank capitalize you. on right, making right, right. female Patty superhero Rangers. characters Thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah. yeah and it's great because yeah. Craig Kyle is the creator of X-23 for uh, he created her obviously for X-Men um, mm-hmm. uh, what's it called X-Men Evolution, X-Men Evolution. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in tw- 2004 and then she was in 2003 2004 yeah. um, so it's exciting to have the creator working on it with him absolutely uh, with James Mangold Agreed. and if James Mangold is passionate about it and he wants to make it there's no reason that Fox would say no because of what he did with Logan. Right. Arsenal Roy says, if they do an X-23 movie, I hope they skip past her being a teen prostitute like in the comics. I, oh. I pretty much guarantee you they yeah. will just They're because not gonna do that. they wouldn't want to touch that with a 10-foot pole no and, and, and no. market their no female-led way. movie and be like, she's a prostitute. No, but no, secondly, no, 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 no. I feel like it's going to be a sequel to Logan. Right. Yes. So right. it'll be like her in Canada with the rest of the yes. those, those mutant kid characters mm-hmm. and then going right. from well, there. Well, because so, also the character... She ages slower, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe not as much as Logan does. 
I don't know. No, she has the same healing factor. Yeah. Logan's okay. Right. So, yeah. but so yeah. okay. So, plus, but, Lo- it, but Logan aged regularly up until when he hit to about thirty five right. years, thirty five years right, old, right, right, and then right, he right. kind of tapered off. Yeah. So. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, and I think this is a great opportunity to kind of keep this character. I don't know how how young Daphne Keene is. Maybe she maybe she is thirteen. I don't know. But it's, she but looked you, really young. Yeah, but you can kind of keep that character between that thirteen to sixteen range. Or a few movies, yeah, man, and kind of take advantage. Yeah, I mean, take you got to shoot them quick because kids grow up quick. I know, that age I know, but I will be. I'm super excited if this if this happens and if it's James Mangold, I'm all about it. I think right. it'll be really I mean, cool. There's, there's really he proved that his formula works. Yeah, and he well, feel, not only that he, could, he and he he also proved that the studio isn't always right. Because yeah, of yes. Wolverine. Yeah. The studio is not always right, studios. The studio is not always right. Yeah. You know, I'm always going to be bummed that whatever new X-Men movie news we hear is not, we're merging with the Marvel Cinematic Universe because yeah. I want these characters to to be in sort of that bigger world instead of kind of uh, in sometimes limiting, sometimes not, just with chronology, continuity. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Logan was great. Now that that's going to be probably a franchise with X-23 of just that future apocalyptic whatever yeah. with whatever they want to do, great. But I'll tell you this. If, they, if Fox at some point in the future does the thing that Sony's doing where they're like, Spider-Man, we're sharing it, but mm-hmm. Venom has his own movie. Mm-hmm. If they wanted to focus on Daphne Keene's version of X-23 mm-hmm. yeah. and give her a franchise, mm-hmm. but then at some point in the future be like, and now we're going to reboot X-Men and Logan Wolverine is coming in back. the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so Logan's going to fight Hulk, but Daphne Keene's still doing X-23s? Right, right, right. X-23s is? I'm like, that's dope. That's Keep cool. doing that. Yeah. I'll that's just, actually, yeah, I'll I would just take always that. be bummed and, you know. I would take that in a heartbeat. Yeah, That'd yeah. Be great. I really would. Yeah. I would not yeah. be like, no, merge them. I want an X twenty three in them. I'd be like, you know what? No, Let cool. Daphne and James do these Let movies. Let her do her thing. Right. Keep it Especially going. Especially if they can come up and grow upon the ideas that were set down in Logan. You know, I like, agree. If you can expand that universe, that'd be awesome because totally. that movie, that just, movie yes. brought me to tears in such a good way. And just mm-hmm. like comic books, there are there's always alternate universes, what ifs. Right. You know what right. I mean? And it's like we've ne- we've yet to see one of those movies. Really, I guess Logan kind of counts. That's kind yeah. of like a yeah. what if yeah. this happens mm-hmm. in the future because it's not set in stone mm-hmm. because whatever. Yeah. Um. But um. Yeah, man, like we, we've never seen a franchise of those movies. Like they're yeah, never going to no. do Superman Red Sun, Superman Red Sun 2, Superman Red Sun 3, Superman, yeah. you know. it will be one sort of one and done. Yeah. If, they're, if yeah. they're doing that. So yeah. that'd be cool. Treaty. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, with Daredevil Season 3 coming, we got a little bit of confirmation. <laughs> or we, not a little. We got a confirmation that Vincent D'Onofrio is coming back as Wilson Fisk. On Twitter, AKA I saw that. The Kingpin. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, I am really excited to have him come back because obviously in season two he was a little, he was mostly a cameo role, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I'm really kind of interested to see. He fought the Punisher. That was crazy. Oh <laughs> yeah, they got into it. It was a great cameo, yeah. and the yeah. way they revealed it was stellar. I thought mm-hmm. that was a really really good way of revealing that character. Uh, I'm excited to see him come back to season three. I want to sort of see. I don't want to say tie. I don't want to say tie up loose ends because I feel like the Kingpin should be a character that's sort of ongoing. Mm-hmm. Of course, I don't want to Absolutely. see that character. I, I would agree with that. Removed yeah. from the show right, in a right. a uh, permanent way. Right. Yeah. right. Um, but I like. The, but I like the fact that we can maybe have this character come back and play a role in addition to whatever other villain they bring in for mm-hmm. season three. Yeah, I agree. He's such a complicated, great three dimensional right. character, and he plays right. so well off of right. Daredevil. I would love to definitely see. M- more interaction with him and Matt Murdock yeah. mm-hmm. and Daredevil. And I'd love to see Vanessa cool. come back. Yep. Absolutely. Vanessa being exiled in Europe and I think yeah. she was pregnant. I want to see her come back with a kid mm-hmm. and then Wilson has a kid. You know, more like layers. a baby. Let's like, get more layers in there. Give him all the layers. Agreed. Give him, I mean, because look at his complicated relationship with his dad. Yeah. What's he going to do oh, when he absolutely. has a kid? Like, Let's explore that such, shit. Like such, Kingpin as a dad. Such a great origin. His son grows up to Absolutely. be a criminal in the comic books. His son's <laughs> name is Richard. He becomes the Rose. This I did not know that. Yeah, the this, Rose. But they're like you guys are saying. There always needs to be a a Kingpin of crime, a guy who's in yeah, charge of all the absolutely. organized crime in the Marvel Cinematic Universe absolutely. in New York. And why not use Vincent for I'm, as many years as I'm you okay can? I'm okay with this because up to when the Vulture came around, I think he the was Kingpin was my favorite That's what villain. somebody just said. Yeah. Warforge said, totally looking forward Where? to it. Definitely the best villain in any Marvel show movie. Yeah. He's yeah, great. Well, I think you can make that case, Vulture man. is better now, but Dang. before Vulture, it was definitely Kingpin. Yeah. And Spider-Man's got to deal with them both. Yeah, <laughs> Spider-Man, they're, and look at that. They're both Spider-Man Listen, villains. the second that Wilson Fist <laughs> slammed the mother effer's head through the door, oh my God. I was oh my God. on yeah. board, yeah. baby. Yeah. The, I, I think the minute I realized that he was staring that that piece of art that he had on his wall yeah. was not a piece of art, but a piece of the wall that Rabbit he used to... snowstorm. I yeah. was just like... 
Wow. Right? Okay. Right, okay. Lucas? That's good. I right. Hyper, I agree with Lucas. Hyper would RPG love to see says, Vincent's uh, Kingpin in the Spider-Man movie. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. That's that's that would be that would be an amazing yin to Spider-Man's yang. Yeah. Yeah. That that's some dynamic. Yep. That's a dynamic. Two very dynamic Absolutely. characters. That would be the ultimate. Fuck, man. I'll tell you what. If the, the Marvel, fuck, if the Marvel first. Studios people, the movie people, were able mm-hmm. to pull this off in in a Spider-Man future film, maybe not have him be the main villain, but if mm-hmm. Spider-Man. They could find a way. They fa- they found a way to put Iron Man in a story, right? Yeah, if they could yeah. find a way to put Peter Parker dealing with crime, and he has to deal with the kingpin Vincent D'Onofrio, mm-hmm. and at one point Charlie Cox's Daredevil shows up and basically tells him, "Stay out of this kid. Mm-hmm. Like right. you're too young mm-hmm. for this." Mm-hmm. That would be the, if <laughs> if the movie we people were like in the world. they're like now nah, we're putting these dudes in a movie. Like that would be the the greatest. That's be all, all we time. want in the world. And then that's the first step to. The Avengers Defenders War, or yeah, to, to yeah. have the Defenders more cameo, you know, to fucking give Mike Coulter his own Avengers movie. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. He's led yeah. the Avengers in the comics, give it to Luke Cage. That's the first step, is that Absolutely. little that little Daredevil Kingpin tease with Spidey. A little like, flavor? Mm-hmm. 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 A little flavor? Mm-hmm. Oh. That's what we want. That's basically all we want. I mean, these characters do it. In, you know what's weird? When I see it in the comics, when I, when I open a comic book, and I see Spider-Man hanging out with Wolverine, hanging out with Captain America, hanging out with like all these characters. I'm like, oh, wait, this is how it's supposed to be. I know, Because man. I'm so used to the movies being so splintered yeah. that, that when yeah. I see it in a comic book, I'm like, oh, this is where the world is right. <laughs> you look at this like, is oh, my God, Kid Man <laughs> This Spider-Man? is where everything what? is okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, you guys want to watch that Runaways trailer? There's a new trailer? Oh, there's yeah. A, there's a new I trailer for the Runaways. Already. Yeah, uh, it came out I today. I did see it. I have not I seen, seen it. Today. Have you guys ever read the Runaways comics? That's I have a question. not. No. Uh, actually, y'all, are gonna, y'all are going to be like, what? Like, for real, for real. For real, for real? <laughs> yes, but if you've read Avengers, uh, Runaways Avengers. If you Wait, read Runaways, Runaways. Were the Runaways the ones that caused Civil War? No, those are the new warriors. Those are the new warriors. Yeah. Okay. Good okay. guess though. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. they're 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 in the same circle. They're kind of like in the, the same heroes, like younger. Yeah. Mutants. yeah. But apparently, the new warriors is going to be a show as well, starring Melana uh, Van Ventrop, Vautrop, who's going to be playing Squirrel Girl. So that's where that, oh, that's, that's, that's also right. going to be a, a show. Girl. And I think that might be a Hulu show. A Hulu show. Uh, a Hulu show. Uh, I think that's actually Hulu show. Freeform, Freeform is going to be uh, new warriors. This so. is Hulu. Runaways is Hulu. 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 Hello, again? you've got a base. Um, <laughs> Turn it on back? the side. Go back. I think you might have hit. That was it. You hit it. Yeah, I hit it. What did you away. do? Oh, you. There it is. There it is. Oh yeah, yeah. That's oh, it. Buzz, That's buzz, it. Buzz, buzz. Oh, this is Lucas, making me want to watch. Or this is making me. I'm gonna have to just borrow Close that thing. Keller's Hulu account. Hit that little. You're gonna X have to do there. what? I said I'm gonna borrow Keller's Hulu account because I don't have Hulu. Yeah. I got Netflix. Yeah, word. So All first right. Marvel show in Hulu. It's like fuck. I gotta get a Hulu subscription. No, Let's I'll borrow. Nah, just borrow it. Hey, Nico. I've been wanting to talk to you all day. I wanted to get everybody back together. And I know that that it can't be like it was. The truth? I miss you guys. It's very similar to Cloak and Dagger. I hope you're right about this not being a big deal. The last thing they're interested in is what their parents are doing. Are you going to let us in? Who are they? Why is my mom's purse here? What kind of charity meeting is this? None of our parents are who we thought. Yeah. Something really weird is going on. Yeah, I have so many questions. No matter what we are, we can't let our parents keep getting away with this stuff. We cannot let anyone undermine what we're doing. We're gonna need another sacrifice. These kids are living on borrowed time. We have to stop this. No one else will. Yep. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. <laughs> is that Oh, it's coming out soon. Oh, that's right. oh fuck, that is soon. <laughs> Only on who? So many Marvel shot. projects this year. Oh, my the goodness. The 17th, we get Punisher. The 21st, we get yeah. Runaways. Wow. Um, I, I dig it. I mean, it's, 
It's a little bit more of like a teen, Absolutely, like a CWE yeah, type yeah. of a show. We are not the demographic for we that We are show. not the demographic for it. But that being said, it still looks like it's fun and entertaining. Mm-hmm. And it actually stylistically looks very different from all the other Marvel shows. It's, it, it's, this it's, feels very disconnected. It's very Yeah, it feels very disconnected. But also it's perfect for a teenager who's like, my parents don't understand me. The only people that get me are my friends, and that's what this is. The parents yeah. are literally the villains of the earth, mm-hmm. and all your friends are the good guys right. trying to get away from your parents. J. Roby, nineteen seventy, says this looks super faithful to the original, to the comic. Yeah, I was surprised at how we went mm-hmm. right to cult parents with the yeah. red robes, yeah. them sacrificing a young woman, there being a raptor in there, like the gauntlet that that one parent had, yeah. like that. You know, like they. It seems like they really are trying to basically do the comic as best yeah. they can which awesome. is that's good which is great because i love the comic and mm-hmm. from what i read of the comic it lends itself so perfectly to a show there you totally. go. the premise is also like so smart so show. great yeah. they're running away from their parents when they yeah. find out their yeah. parents are super villains it's amazing there's twists and turns it's based in la so it's like yeah you idiots film that as a tv show here like mm-hmm. you it's supposed to be in la you know it's mm-hmm. the one group of marvel characters in la as opposed to everybody else being and in it's New York. also right. where a cult could get like an underground cult could get away with it like people yeah. just have a ton of money and hide oh, in these yeah. giant houses over here yeah, like, yeah yeah you could get away with that in la you should yeah, see our sure. neighbors <gasps> yeah oh i need to peek over their fence yeah, right no but yeah i mean it looks it looks it looks fun yeah it looks fun you and it's hard to say you know it's hard to say whether or not it is or isn't for our demographic because you're basing it on a trailer that has a really right. poppy song right. on it and yes. stuff so you look at it and you're like and eh, not not my demographic but yeah, yeah. So jeff in the in the chat room was like not digging the song and yeah. i'm and i'm like i'm not you're not wrong jeff but i'm yeah. curious how old are you because yeah. we're all like 30s we're yeah. like late 20s early 30s so that's probably no, why I think we're, we're not 30 now right yeah, yeah man. We're all there. We're all there. We're all there. What are they? No more late twenties, Hector. No more. <laughs> Mira lo. We're Generally not, we're too old. So one of the parents is Spike from Buffy. Yeah, I forget. Is it? Is it? Uh, Jason Marsden? Marsden? Yeah, I think I so. Yeah, yeah that's, Brainiac, what, that's what he's Brainiac from. And yeah. Smallville. Yeah, and I think he was also Piccolo in Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> Why do we talk about that? Hector? I don't know. God. Deep cuts. Deep cuts. Never it. forget. Never yeah. Forget. So just to sum that up, uh, I'm not gonna watch it, but it looks well done. Uh, hopefully it gets good reviews and hopefully people who do watch it enjoy mm-hmm. it because James Marsters thank Marsters, you Green Eye Trombone I want more people to develop these kind of things agreed yeah yeah mm-hmm. and like again there's a lot of superhero shows coming on, yeah. on TV yeah. between all the CW stuff what Marvel's doing you know there's so many things both yeah. on Freeform on Hulu on Netflix we can't cover all of it <laughs> no, it's, it's not too possible much. it's too much talk to Jay Jay, Jay Washington yeah how the fuck do you cover all the understand. shows that you cover? I don't understand. Jay doesn't Jay sleep. Does that. Apparently not. No. And neither are we tonight because we're about to go watch Stranger Things. Oh, oh, at least make really? me, Cameron, and Lucas are. Oh, Wait, God. you're going to watch Stranger Things tonight? <laughs> yep. We're doing some videos for the interwebs for you guys this weekend. Wait, so one. tune in. All no, episodes? we're doing season two. All nine episodes? All of it. You're dumb. You're full yep. of Yup. Do you have energy drinks? Do you have coffee? Do you have... We're going we're gonna, to going to going to work up. tomorrow? You're do you have not cocaine? going to work tomorrow. We'll find out. Oh, we'll find man. out not next week on Hyperheroes. <laughs> uh, All right, let's wrap this up. It's like 4 a.m., dude. We got to oh, go. Oh, it's, it's 3 a.m. No, for it's some not. people in the chat room. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for the first episode of Hyperheroes. Real shit show. Can't wait to be here next week at 9, promptly, and not at 10, 30, 45, yeah. whenever our movie gets out. Uh, thanks to the new Red Ranger, uh, our homie. Petey. Thanks for coming Petey. by, man. <laughs> homie Peter, for <laughs> dropping by. Um, of course. Yeah. Guys, also, you should know that we're doing Hyperdrive Volume 6 this weekend, starting at 10 a.m. New time, 10 a.m., because we are having a Halloween party after, which will not be live streamed, so don't get excited. But some of the RPGs include a Nightmare on Elm Street RPG, which is super dope. Oh, Cameron, Cameron's yeah. writing that one. Uh, he, I have a feeling we're going to hear that. We're going to hear the word bitch a lot. He's going to be like, you're a bitch. Uh, come here, bitch. He's not probably, dressed up as Freddy Krueger, yeah. which I'm sure he is. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be super awesome. So make sure you guys tune in for that. That's going to be Saturday starting at 10. Sunday starting at 10, we're doing a Stranger Things Marathon Season 2. I don't know how we're going to survive the weekend. And then Danny's coming on Sunday night at 8 p.m. She's going to be doing a double feature of one of the movies I know is Night of the Living Dead. That is in the the public domain. Yes, it is. Scream Skull or something like that. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure of the name. But because Night of the Living Dead is in the public domain, you guys will actually be able to watch it live with her. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's going to have some guests and stuff. So that'll be a lot of fun. Make sure you stick around for that. Mm -hmm. And of course, Monday, we're just steamrolling right back into Monday. Monday, full full day programming. Uh, Tuesday, Yo, watch episode that Power two, Rangers show. Power Rangers it's so Hyper good. Force. It's really, really it's good. It's dope. Oh, yeah. It's great. so dope. Malika's doing a great job jamming yeah. that. 
the team is having a really fun time. And uh, you should watch because they're going to roll out some really cool shit for the episode. Yeah. Um, so stick around for that. Of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, guys, let us know in the comments what you thought about everything we talked about. If you've seen Thor Ragnarok, give us your spoiler-free review down in the comments. Good. Next yeah. week, come back. When the movie's actually out, we'll and we'll drop spoiler our spoiler review, yeah. and we'll be able to talk all the spoilers, yeah. all the spoilers in that video. So don't spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. I know some European territories have the movie early, mm -hmm. uh, or if you got an early access, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. There's some good stuff in there that we definitely want to talk about yeah. and expand more on some of the things that we talked about uh, in this episode. But, Hector, where can everybody find you? Find me on the internet at Hector is Funny. And on Pencils and Parsecs at 9 p.m. Oh, yeah, yeah. you can. That's going to be fun. a great RPG oh, show. Thanks so yeah. much, man. And we're gonna be dressing up for her, uh, for her, we're gonna are be you dressing gonna, up. You're gonna dress up like your character? Nope, I'm just gonna be uh, dressing up like a Star Wars character because no, I do not have the budget. I do not have very the difficult. budget to have, to Come dress on, up like a nine foot tall cat Come on, creature. Her, her, if you like Star Wars, check it out. Her, if you're watching this on YouTube, her. that's Friday. That's tonight at 9 p.m. Yeah, on Twitch.tv slash another Hyper great or RPG. RPG. You can Fun. find me at L underscore Santo Taco. Pork Bert hashtag. That's what's oh, going to yeah. be. Yeah. By oh, the way, Larry, he's going to yes. dress up like a pork. Uh, guys, you can find me at Adam Havik. Find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash hyperrpg. And uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye.